Hey everybody, it's time to continue with our solid design discussion. This topic is on the open-close principle. So roll the intro and let's get started. Okay, open-close principle is the O in solid. And the idea behind the open-close principle is that while change is inevitable, we have to manage change within our application. If you can imagine if all of a sudden your country decided to change its electric grid and go to a different type of socket or plug, that would create all kinds of problems. Now we've been through things like this before, switching from analog television to HD. When it comes to software development, what we wanna do is understand what the impact of that change is. If it's an acceptable ripple effect and we can easily make the changes, then we might make the decision to go ahead and modify a class or a module to some extent. If the impact of the change is not measurable, in other words, it involves other projects besides our own, then we certainly don't want to make those kinds of changes. Timing is everything. So if you're in early phases, early stages of development, you can make changes to a class. You can change the name of the class. In fact, if you have a poorly named or misnamed class, we certainly want to fix that early, not postpone it and have to deal with it sometime later on. Changing methods, adding parameters, etc. These are all things that can be done in early development stages because we can use our refactoring tools that are within our integrated development environment. Now, once your code is in use, we don't want to make changes to it anymore, especially when that usage goes beyond your project. When other project teams are using your code, your classes, we don't want to make changes to it that would break their code. Certain changes are allowed while other changes are not. We don't want to change the name of the class. We don't want to change the inheritance of the class. We don't want to change the names of any of the methods within the class. However, we can extend the class. We can add more methods to the class. We can even add more interfaces for the class to implement. We just don't want to change those things that would cause other code to break, not just syntactical changes, but also semantical changes. You may not change the name of a method, you may not change the parameters, but if the method does something different than it did before, produces a different outcome, or requires a different prerequisite or precondition before it's invoked, then that would also break existing code. And we don't want to make that kind of change. At this point, our class is closed for modification. So the open-close principle basically says you can extend, but you can't modify. And originally, this mainly applied to inheritance. So if you have an existing class called dog and you want to be able to add a fetch capability to retrieve items like a Labrador Retriever would have, that might impact existing code. So rather than modifying the dog class, the correct option would be to create a new subclass of dog called Labrador Retriever. So the open close principle in, in action tells us that we can't modify a class, but we can extend it. So that brings us to what kind of things can we do once a class is closed for modification? What are the extension mechanisms? Well, obviously inheritance, we just talked about that, create a subclass. The next option would be to add additional methods to your class, even overloading existing methods, new methods with the same name, just different parameter list. That doesn't break any existing code and offers the new feature that a developer might be looking for. The next option would be to provide additional parameters to existing existing methods. That's okay as long as you provide default parameter values so that existing callers are not harmed by your change. Java does not support that capability, so in Java you'll just use a straight up overload with the additional parameters. Sometimes we might need to modify an interface, and this is really tricky because if you add an additional method to an interface, that requires all of the classes that implement that interface to come up with that new method. So now the Java community ran into this problem because the age of the language, many of the interfaces really did need to be updated. So in Java version eight, what they did is they introduced something called default method bodies. This basically gives the programmer the ability to put a method inside of an interface, not just the signature, but an actual method body. In C++, we can essentially do the same thing because C++ does not have a dedicated interface syntax. It only has classes, and we get to define what's a class 
and wants an interface based on our intent. C Sharp does not support that capability. However, C Sharp does support what we call extension methods. This is how you can add methods to an existing class, even if you don't have source code to it, by creating those source methods in a different source file. So in those three languages, at least, we do have the ability to manage change within the world of interfaces in a way that still adheres to the open-close principle. And those mechanisms provided by Java and C Sharp are specifically there to help us adhere to this open-close principle. All right, so in conclusion, think of it this way. If you're gonna make a change to something, whether it's a syntactical change or the change of what actually happens when a method executes, and that's going to cause other code to not compile or other code's unit test to not succeed, do you want to go in and make all of the fixes to all of those classes so that they work correctly? If the answer is no, I don't really wanna spend the weekend doing that, then don't make the change that you're thinking about making to a class. Always evaluate what the impact is gonna be. And as long as a class still belongs to a local project and you can manage those changes, then we can keep it open. But once it becomes part of an existing code base, we probably ought to treat it as a closed class and deal with modifications through one of many extension opportunities provided by the various classes. Well, I hope you enjoyed our discussion on the open-close principle. Coming up soon, we'll be talking about the rest of the solid design principles. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss those videos as soon as they come out. And as always, code happy.